my charge is three things in science that uh, are changing uh, the path to health. Um, first, um, science itself is changing. The 20th century was dominated by a single science, chemistry. And chemistry had a profound effect on science, but also on the human condition. We are watching, looking around, standing on, wearing, watching chemistry in action. And chemistry has been the most successful science in human history. But there are some principles about chemistry that made it so successful. It's a reductionist science. You take things apart. You study them as individual elements, and you can manipulate them as individual elements. It is that isolationist approach that has made chemistry so successful. But it has left us with certain legacies. For example, reductionists, we make single genetic cloned crops. We recommend generic diets for everyone, and we take a population view. That's the result of the successes of chemistry. Um, the science is changing. It's moving to biology as the dominant science of, of health. And biology is an integrative science. It's about systems and ecology. It's about organisms, and that's how we're changing. And in fact, it's being applied already. Industrialization of living organisms is genuinely part of the, of, 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 of the new industrialization of science. So three things. First, we're not the same. Now, typically when you think of people being different, you think of people being healthy or sick. Uh, and these data are from that very prestigious uh, scientific journal Sports Illustrated. These are actually images of women and men. They are the lead athletes in a variety of sports, baseball, football, gymnastics. They are the best uh, athletes. They are, in essence, the healthiest among us. We can't look at these images without agreeing that we're not the same. There's a biological difference. And in fact, even if you could imagine we could make uh, Purina human chow and make people healthier, it would make them more the same. And that's not what we want anyway. We have different aspirations for our health, and we're going to have to deliver science to make people as healthy as they personally want to. So that difference means we're going to have to understand health in scientific terms. That means understanding what it is that makes us uh, unique. Phenotype is the term. That describes my, my structure, my metabolism, my cognition. It's the term for what I am right now. Phenotype is the result of genotype, the genes I got from my parents. Environment, diet, lifestyle, exercise, etc. But we now know it's more than that. From a diet and health perspective, from literally before you're born, your environment begins to interact with your genome. Your genome responds to that environment and learns from it. And as a result, you are literally programmed from early life to change. That means that if you have, for example, a very bad diet very early in life, you're predisposed to diseases you wouldn't otherwise. So diet has a profound effect on you throughout your life. And so phenotype is a result of all of these factors. Now, the typical way we think about measurement of health is by the classic approach diagnostics. What is the one thing that distinguishes those people with a disease? It's easy, it discriminates between healthy and disease, but it doesn't tell you about health itself. Health measurement means we're going to have to measure processes as they're functioning. And so it's not going to be measuring one thing that's gone horribly wrong. It's measuring entire processes, immunology, metabolism, cognition. These are the key things we're going to have to measure. Okay? And that's really the goal. So from a business opportunity perspective, what are we going to have to do? We're going to have to make personal health measurements of our health processes available to everyone. That's going to transform not only health, it's going to transform health care. It's going to become a massive industry. The technologies are going to be, have to be fast, cheap, often inaccurate. And that's the big opportunity. Give people the means to measure their own health. So that's one. Two, we're not alone. We are basically an ensemble of a trillion cells, human cells, but we contain within us 10 times as many bacteria. If you held a boat, you would lose. The bacteria in you dominate on a numerical perspective. And we're only now beginning to realize how important that is. As we begin to measure bacteria in people, people who are overweight and lean, different bacteria. Diabetic or not, different bacteria. Even autistic or not, different bacteria. So the bacteria are clearly an important determinant of various processes. Now that we know the bacteria are different, the big questions are, OK, how do you change it? 
And if you change it, is it in the right direction? So that's been our big question, uh, trying to figure that out. We have an interesting model. <laughs> the worst news. We were written ignorant in this environment. How did this happen? How did we manage to believe that we could abandon the education of the population in terms of uh, diet and health? Well, it came because chemistry discovered all of the essential nutrients. We know with mature scientific knowledge every single essential nutrient. Now, when a scientific field makes a discovery, you can bring it to practice in one of two ways. You can educate the population or you can industrialize put it in the environment around it, so they benefit from it but don't know it. That's what we did with diet and health. Essential nutrients were not educated, the population doesn't get educated in them, we just put them in the foods. Iodized salt, fortify cereals, why? Because it works. Diet and health needs education. So we have a program starting at the University of California Davis where we're literally taking this concept of personalizing health into the schools, and we're literally putting device measurements on kids so that they, they can know their own health. For example, activity. If you're an active child, if you play, you're going to be an active adult, and you're going to be far less likely than most of the diseases we now know that people are heir to. If they're going to change their activity, you have to do it when they're very young, and they don't even know if they're active. So we put a simple commercial device on them and measure their activity. Now, we're not doing it just to know how active they are. <coughs> we collect the data. And then we asked the child, you were active then, what were you doing? Find out what they like to do, and then find out what are the barriers to them doing it more, and get rid of those barriers. Personalized activity, personalized diet, personalized taste, so they understand their own health. Graduate from high school literally as the clinician of one, themselves. It's the truth. So the business opportunity is literally personal health education. It's a massive budget opportunity. Personalizing diet and health will be a major curriculum addition over the next few years. Someone's going to have to build the devices, the educational tools, and, uh, and, and the wellness is an obvious uh, opportunity to do that. Thank you.